for any of you impatient folk out there that feel the need to skip ahead really quick, you're not going to want to do that. You're just not going to want to do that, okay? All right, who is ready for the fire? Comment down below. Let me know if you are ready for this motherfucking fire. Are you ready? Are you ready? Welcome to the best Aries solar eclipse video that you are gonna see. <laughs> oh wow, God, this Aries energy is getting to me. I didn't know I was competing, but I guess we are. So uh, yeah, get ready. I have some juice for you today. I have some fire for you today that you are not gonna wanna miss, okay? And for any of you impatient folk out there that feel the need to skip ahead really quick, you're not gonna wanna do that. You're just not gonna wanna do that, okay? Because the beginning of this video is gonna be the, the spanking that your soul needs. It's gonna be the spanking on your soul's ass that you mother freaking need okay alrighty we are all the way back in the YouTube vibe here I figured like if we're gonna do this we need the proper set up ring light backlight all the things right let me know down below if you're feeling it and let's get into this Aries solar eclipse video because it is a fucking big one it is a big one okay the reason that you're hearing about it so much is because it is a big freaking deal but I don't believe that it's as negative as people think it is. I don't believe it's negative at all. And I'm going to explain why. I have I have my whole case, my whole case planned out here. Okay, so I just need you to, to listen to me argue for my side during this video. And I guarantee you, you're probably gonna relate to it more than you do whatever else you've heard <laughs> on the internet so far about this eclipse. Because yes, it is a big deal. Yes, it can change your freaking life. But no, I don't think it's negative. I don't think it's like a super demonic entity that is going to like wreak havoc on your life because honestly and truly it's a solar eclipse at the end of the day solar eclipse is a new moon it's gonna take months to to really actually play full out so I really doubt that most people are gonna notice this huge dramatic change right on the solar eclipse not saying it's not possible okay if you're really tuned in tapped in if you can really feel the the flow of energy yeah maybe you you might feel the shift right but for the most part the physical events that it's gonna bring up in your life could take a couple days, a week, a few months, six months, a year. You don't really know, right? So we're going to talk about it and don't skip ahead, okay? Don't skip ahead because this is important and you need to fucking know this. So I need you to sit the fuck down, calm the fuck down, chill the fuck out, hang out with me. Hello, your fa favorite alien badass YouTuber on the internet that is an astrologer and all kinds of other things. If you didn't know, I am all kinds of other things. I am a coach. I'm a mentor. I help you embrace your fucking magic and your fucking confidence and blow up in your life, your business, your career, etc. So if you want to know more about that, make sure you're following me on Instagram and uh, my other socials and seeing the description down below. Alrighty. Also, I am do still doing a sale on my readings. The price did raise a little bit, but not much because I know these are cray cray times. And for those of you that are going cray cray and you need some guidance, you need a shift, you need the magic back in your life, book a reading down below. Look, mama is coming in hot and spicy today, honey. She is not playing. She is not playing. Let's get into it, shall we? First things first, this Aries mother effing solar eclipse. As always, what the fuck is a solar eclipse? What the fuck is one, right? Solar eclipse is when the moon, literally the moon and the sun get together. They combine, they integrate, they have babies. I'm just kidding. <laughs> they kind of do in a way if you think about it though, but they get together, right? And what happens is the moon, especially with this moon, and especially if you're in the US where you can see it, the moon is gonna eclipse the sun. And we're not gonna really see the moon or the sun for a short period of time. We may see the ring around it, but really what this represents is darkness. And I know that sounds really crazy, but if you've been here for a while, you know what I always say with new moons. Creation happens in the dark, honey. In the dark. Feminine energy. Feminine energy is dark. It is yin. It is the black part of the yin and yang, right? Which means creation happens in the dark. That's why you cannot see a baby right? Other than now we have equipment to see a baby, right? But you can't see the process. When you plant a seed into soil, you can't see the process of the plant growing. Creation happens in the mother up in dark. You don't see the, the birthing process, right? So a solar eclipse, which is basically a new moon that is very amplified and powerful and intense, is something happening, something being created, a new beginning, a really, really big new beginning. So this solar eclipse in particular is like a spiritual reset. It's a huge spiritual reset. I'm gonna tell you why in just a minute. So now that we got that out of the way, right? It's basically a new beginning, a new beginning that's happening, that's aligning with the North Node. What is the North Node? It is a point in the sky that shows us where some of the eclipse will be happening. There's two nodes in the sky, a North Node and a South Node, and they are opposite of each other and opposite signs. 
right? These are mathematical points in the sky that show us where the eclipses are going to be happening for an 18 month period of time. We just had a lunar eclipse in Libra, the opposite sign of Aries, and I did a video on that. It wasn't my favorite video. I was coming back to like doing videos after a little bit of a break, so it was a little awkward and weird, but the Libra <laughs> lunar eclipse video, I did a video on that, what all that meant. It could have been better, but you get my point. Libra is the sign of balance, relationships, connection. We see ourselves through others, right? Aries is the opposite of Libra, and Aries is about the self, the individual, individuality, independence, right? And that's where this particular eclipse is happening. It's happening in the sign of Aries, which is about independence, like going your own way, being a trailblazer, being a pioneer, doing your own thing, worrying about your goddamn self. And with that, though, the reason that Aries is so associated with negative stereotypes is because it is ruled by Mars. Mars, the planet of war and conflict and masculine energy. So with that being said, to be oneself, to be true to oneself, to be sovereign, to be independent, to do your own freaking mother effing thing, like you are going to trigger other people. It's going to cause conflict. There is a flair to Aries where this archetype likes conflict. This ar archetype kind of likes competition, right? There is this kind of like competitive game playing, chasing energy that comes with Aries doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Being competitive doesn't have to be a bad thing. That's why we have sports and things like that. But it is a thing. Okay, so that's where the eclipse is happening. In the sign of Aries, which is really going to bring up themes of independence, sovereignty, individuality, doing what you desire to do, acting on the things that you want, and not worrying so much about what other people are going to think about it, what other people are going to say about it, because that's more of a Libra issue. And this is not a Libra eclipse, right? We just went through that. The really interesting thing about this eclipse is that it's happening on the asteroid or whatever you prefer to call it of Chiron. And Chiron I'm very familiar with because it's conjunct my ascendant. Thank you very much. So I feel like I'm Chiron's spokesperson, one of them. <laughs> you know, there's many more I've met them. I've read for a lot of you guys that have the same aspect <laughs> or Chiron on sun or whatever. Chiron is about the wounded healer. The archetype of really having this really deep wound that is like feels impossible to heal and you go through so many different journeys and so many different experiences learning all of these things to try to heal so you take that knowledge you take that wisdom you take that energy you take that experience and you help other people to heal their own wounds right so if you have a very prominent chiron aspect in your chart i mean like chiron on your ascendant chiron on your sun chiron on your moon you know maybe chiron on your north node like something like that like you are here to embrace the healer archetype. You are here to go first. You are here to experiment on yourself first, unless it's maybe like in your seventh house or something. Most of the time you're here to heal, like use yourself as the experiment. Chiron is this wounded healer, right? So with this eclipse on Chiron, this is so much about like a lot of people think it's about like, you know, some big wounding thing could happen and not saying that that's completely impossible, but with it being a, an eclipse, which is a new beginning and every new beginning is, is an ending. So with this being a new moon solar eclipse in Aries, I see this as an ending and a beginning. And with it being on Chiron, I see this as a huge wounded cycle that is coming to a close and there's a new cycle starting, not even necessarily a huge like new wounding cycle started because I feel like a lot of our wounds happen in childhood, you know, not to say that they can't happen in adulthood, but a lot of them are deep within us, right? It's like something that we grew up with or something that we grew up dealing with, like some kind of traumatic childhood shit. So I feel like this is a new beginning, a new cycle starting that's like, a whole other realm, whole other era, whole other world than what we've been healing before. And I really got the message, I really got the download that this is somehow healing like decades of trauma for people, decades of wounds for people. So if there's like been one wound that's been really consistent in your life and you've likely noticed it coming up recently, right? And maybe it's like something that you just keep, like it's like every problem leads back to it, especially if you're a self-aware person and you practice self-development. It's like every problem just kind of always roots back to this one thing, right? It's like, I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy or something's wrong with me or whatever, right? It's like everything roots back to this one thing inside of you. And it's like, I feel like this is like a spiritual and healing reset that is happening with this solar eclipse. I feel like that's what this is saying. I don't feel like this is some doom, gloom, oh my God, something really crazy and really bad is gonna happen to you on April 8th. Like, no, I feel like this is about you coming back to you, you coming back to yourself and what's good for self and realizing that maybe there's nothing fucking wrong with you, right? Because the true tea on this solar eclipse in Aries is really like with the sun in Aries, this is about our self, Aries, 
and sun, concept, sun. How we see ourselves is everything. Do you see yourself as being the main character? Oh, I ran out of storage, Mercury retrograde, of course, but if not, then why not? Why not? Like, do you see yourself as the one? Do you see yourself as capable of having the things that you want, of taking the action as, uh, that you want? I have a concept in my world, like if you're a client, you know this, called big deal energy. <laughs> Aries is some major big deal energy. It is like the confidence, it is the individuality, it is the knowingness of like, I know that I'm a badass, I know that I'm a trailblazer, I know that I'm not here to just do what everybody else's way. Like it's that kind of energy. So where is your perception of yourself and your experience of yourself wounded, right? This is an opportunity. This is a reset. This is a chance for you to let that shit go and embrace some kind of healing or integrate it in some way. Make it a part of yourself and just integrate it. And then maybe it won't have control over you anymore. So it's like, where has our sense of self been wounded? Another big thing with Aries is it is about action. It is about taking action. Okay, it is about being an action taker. It is about going all in on that one thing that you desire, that one direction, not sitting here and contemplating it and going back and forth and sitting on the fence. Like a lot of the lunar eclipse in Libra was about that, like us really deciding one way or the other or trying to integrate two sides or, you know, seeing where we've been on the fence in our lives. And Aries is very direct. It's very direct. And it's very potent and it's very sharp and it's very like one direction, like this is where we're going and we're freaking doing it right? So where have you been sitting on the fence? Like I say a lot, fence sitters are quitters because you're basically, you're basically quitting on life. You're basically sitting out. You're not like participating in your life, right? So you have to make a decision. You're not going to know how until you make a decision, right? And so a lot of the times we sit there and we wait and we go back and forth because of a lot of different things, but a lot of the time it's like, well, how's it all going to happen? And what's, what's step five through 80? And like, I need to know those steps before I can take the first step. And it's like, no, you freaking don't like, just go take freaking action, right? Like if you really want success, if you really want the things that you desire in life, whatever that is, whether it's success, relationships, et cetera, if you want to be successful at the things that you desire, it's time to freaking move. It's time to move. The other thing that holds us back the most, I'm just looking at my notes in the chart here, but the other thing that holds us back the most is thinking that we aren't good enough. And I think that this is the huge thing with Chiron being conjunct the, the solar eclipse and something that you might notice coming up in yourself or your own life, where you felt that not enoughness, where you felt that like, I'm not worthy enough, I'm not good enough, where you don't believe in yourself, you don't have that inner fire, that inner confidence, because there's there's a gap there, there's something kind of in the way or blocking it. And so it's like, we need to be able to go all in. So we need to be able to get everything on board to move freaking forward. So that means our confidence, our insecurity, our spark, our, uh, our you know, vulnerabilities, like whatever, like we need to get everything on board and move forward. So, so much of the time it's because like we fear that we're not good enough. We fear that we're not good enough. We are worried about other people. We're worried about starting some kind of conflict. We're worried about what other people are going to think of us. We're worried about haters. We're worried about all of these other things. But it's like, are you going to let other people's ideas of you box you in and hold you back in your life? How much are you going to do that? How much longer are you going to let someone else's potential opinion of you box you in in your own life? Because really, it's only your own perception anyway. It's all you. Aries energy is about realizing that you are the one. You are the one and only. This is all up to you, baby. This is your game. This is your game. There are no enemies. There are no other people. There are no, no nothing, no one to blame. It's all you. It's all up to you. You have the power. You have the power to activate your soul, to, to wake your freaking soul up. You have the power to step into your goddamn freaking right to rule your life in the way that you see fit. Like you have the power to do that. So stop worrying about others and conflict and yada, yada, yada. Because when you step in to your desire and what you want and your excitement, like you're, you're going to feel like you're taking like the actions and the steps and the intuitive nudges that come from that place feel aligned, which is called aligned action and alignment with who you are. Because when you're wobbly inside and you take action from that place, your action is wobbly and then nothing gets done and it feels like nothing's freaking working. But it's like, no, you're wobbly in here. You're already back and forth. You're on the fence, 
right? You're in the unbalanced Libran energy. And it's like, you need to freaking get clear and direct and take action from that place, which is like, I know who I am. I know what I want. I know what I like. And I'm fucking doing this, right? That's when big shit happens in your life. That's when big shit happens in your life. So are you doing this to be liked or are you doing this for yourself to succeed? When you can accept that you're not even doing this to be liked in the first place, you start taking action. It's like, what in your life are you not chasing? What in your life have you given up chasing because of old wounds that told you otherwise or because of some insecurity or some waiting game that you're playing with yourself? Like I had a call with a client earlier today and we talked about this waiting game that we get in. We do it to ourselves. Like we're the ones doing it. We're the puppet master here. Like we can sit here and blame our circumstances and other people and all of that all the time. But it's like, that's victim consciousness. That's lack consciousness. It's a delusion. It's not the truth. The truth is we're playing this freaking game. We're doing it. We're, we're the ones doing it. We're the puppet masters here. So it's like we can sit here and play the waiting game of moving back and forth and thinking, when, I'm, when I feel ready, I will finally take this action. When I feel good enough, I will finally go after the thing I desire. When I have enough healing, I will finally go after the thing I desire. When I feel the motivation, I will finally do the thing. When I have enough money, I'll finally do the thing. All of that is literally outsourcing your power. Because if you want it freaking bad enough, like you will do it very simple Aries quote that is so true, <laughs> especially in this circumstance. Like if you want it bad enough, you're going to freaking do it. You'll find a freaking way because you are so much more powerful than you're giving yourself freaking credit for. So stop sitting on the fence and make a freaking decision and take action on that decision. Take action, right? Queens, kings, they take action. They make moves. They don't make excuses. What have you given up on because of old wounds? This energy is giving us like a huge dose of belief in ourselves, a huge dose of self-worth of like really truly seeing ourselves in some area of our lives. To make big things happen in our lives, you guys, it takes this strong belief, this strong conviction in yourself, this like big ballsy energy, this big ballsy conviction in yourself and you take action from that place. And I'm telling you, it works out better than you could have ever imagined. It will blow your mind. Like, and so again, like, are you doing this to succeed at what you actually desire and what you actually want? Or are you doing this to be liked? You have to like get honest and clear with yourself about that. If people think you've gone batshit, then good, <laughs> good. Like if you've, if people think you've gone batshit, you're on track. If you start getting haters and people aren't liking it, you're on freaking track. It means you're doing the right thing, seriously. Another thing about this eclipse is that the vulnerability or the insecurity you know, that you've been kind of running from or avoiding or hiding due to what other people may think or whatever, that is the way forward. So that is definitely going to be the way forward for some people. Like, you know, there's this huge trend going around on Instagram right now, like social media is fake. This is what's really going on. This is very Chiron on this, you know, meeting this solar eclipse. Like that's very much this energy, people just coming out and owning their shortcomings, their vulnerabilities, their insecurities. Like that's very much what this is about. Because when you can own that and you're no longer in conflict with the thing that you're fighting, <laughs> that's when you have the power. That's when you become the integrated individual when you stop fighting it. It doesn't mean you have to listen to it. Like if you have this deep insecurity that's telling you to give up on the very thing that you desire, that you really, really want, it doesn't mean that you have to give up on it. You just need to feel the insecurity and feel why it's telling you that you're not worth having the thing. And just, it's really just about feeling it, letting it move through you. And then it gets out of your system and then you feel clear. And then you're like, okay, I'm ready to take this on now, right? Then all of you can merge and get on on board. For some of you, it may just be speaking a truth that you need to, to speak about, you know, something that you've been hiding from other people about yourself or just embracing it. Like when you embrace your quote unquote weaknesses, your quote unquote shortcomings, your quote unquote insecurities, they no longer have power over you anymore and no one can use them against you anymore either. It's the best strategy. It is some alchemical freaking shit. It is the best strategy. You embrace the things that make you different, that make you unique, and that's how you stand out. And that's the beautiful thing because you don't want to be like everybody else. Like the people that are drawn to me and my channel and my work and working with me, they don't want to be like everybody else. They're trailblazers. They're here to stand out. They're here to be different. That's why you've never fit in. That's why you've never felt normal or like other people or like you could do everything that other people do or do what society tells you to do. Like, no, you're here to be different. You're here to blaze your own path. You're here to be a leader. 
right? So how are you leading yourself? This is about seeing and becoming conscious of the deep subconscious wounds within us that are holding us back from being able to lead ourselves so we can face this shit once and for all and feel confident enough moving forward to eventually even help others with the same issue. That's what this is about. So the vulnerability or the insecurity is the way forward. If you've been experiencing some kind of pain in taking action or some kind of pain in going after what you want or showing who you are, that's what this eclipse is trying to show you and bring up in you. Okay, so wanted to add this in because last year during the Aries new moon, which wasn't an eclipse, but it was conjunct Chiron, I was listening back to that video just to see what I said back then. And I said something really powerful that I wanted to share with you, just in case it ends up relating with you, okay? So I was talking about how Mars and the sign of Aries really deals with challenge. It's like, bring on the mother effing challenge, you know? <laughs> like, that's why it can be competitive. It's very masculine. It's like, er, you know? It's like 100 energy, right? Like that movie, The 100. Or no, not The 100. The 300? The, the show, The 100, though, was really freaking good. <laughs> I can't remember. I think it's The 300, right? The warriors, like... Aries is like a very warrior-esque type of sign. It's ruled by Mars, right? War, like all the things. It's like that kind of energy. You keep going no matter what. When the challenge happens, it stretches you. Like when you are in this energy, it's like, okay, right? Like, so what I was talking about last year is like, you go to the gym. It's like the same thing as going to the gym. You go to the gym and you know you're going to be challenged. You know you're going to feel sore as fuck and probably not too good after your first few times. So what a lot of people do, and this is the same concept in anything that you take action on, anything that you want, right? Anything in the world that you want, that you desire, that you're manifesting, that you take action on, that you go after, any goal that you're going after, it's going to feel uncomfortable at first because it's new. But the re like the uncomfortability is the movement within you, the change within you that's happening, just like your muscles being sore. Your muscles being sore, the challenge, the stretch is the sign that it's working. And so often we give up when we feel that soreness and when we feel that stretch because we're like, oh, it's sore. It must not be working. Oh, this challenge came up. You know, this thing I didn't expect, like I took action and then I had this thing come up and it's like challenging and it's uncomfortable and I didn't expect it. So I'm going to give up now. So it must mean it's not working. No, that's not what it means. The challenge is like, hey, yeah, it's working. Face this, and this is going to help you stretch even more into who you need to become to get to where you want to go, right? Just like the gym. Just like going to the gym, you go to the gym, your muscles get sore. That's a sign that it's working. Your muscles are stretching. There's movement that's happening inside of you. There's change happening, and change is stretchy. It's uncomfortable, when things come up, challenges come up, it's because they are meant to change us. They're meant to change how we're seeing things, how we're feeling about things. They're meant to change our insides. That's the freaking point, right? But if we're like, oh, it's not working, I give up, but then you have the wrong idea. No, it is working and you need to continue. <laughs> you know, you need to continue to where you get comfortable in the chaos and then eventually it doesn't become chaos. It becomes your baseline. You're comfortable now. And then you can go to the gym and it's easy and it's no big deal. You can do the things that you did before that felt like a big deal, but they no longer feel like a big deal. They don't stretch you as much. So then you go to the next thing and stretch yourself a little more, right? We love challenge. And when we can embrace that we actually love challenge, we love the discomfort, we love the pain, we thrive in the chaos, then we're good. When we can merge our desire and our pleasure and the pain together, we are good. Venus is in Aries right now. That's a lot about what this is about. Like, can you actually, like, get down with the sickness, you know? Like, can you see that you actually, like, if everything was the same all the time, how boring would that be? This is why people jump out of airplanes. This is why people go rock climbing. This is why people go zip lining. Like, I went zip lining a couple weeks ago. I went out of town with my significant other, went zip lining, and it was freaking incredible, um, but scary as fuck at first, right? But then, like, once I did it, like, a couple of times, like, every time I was out there on the zip line, like, I just forgot all of my fears. But, like, standing there and waiting to do it, I was like, oh my god, it's scary. Aries is about just jumping, just doing, just get on the damn zip line and freaking go. Just go to the gym and freaking do it. Yeah, it's going to suck. Yeah, you're going to be challenged, right? Like I posted this quote in my membership the other day that I heard. I'm not sure who it's by, but it's um, like the difference between a beginner and a master is that a master has failed more times. Like when you stop fearing failure, when you stop fearing the discomfort and you just freaking go for it, you can make miraculous things happen. That's when your life changes. That's when you have the breakthrough. So let me know if this related to you. I felt like I wanted to add this in here. So let me know. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next part of this solar 
solar eclipse in Aries, which is Mars conjunct Saturn. It's basically coming into its conjunction almost exact right around the time of this eclipse, which is really big because Mars rules this eclipse. So we always want to look at what Mars is doing in the chart to kind of get even more clues as to what's going to be coming up for this eclipse, what we're going to be seeing, what's, you know, what the themes are, what, what people can notice, all of that. And so with Mars being there with Saturn and Pisces, a very different energy than Aries, this eclipse is definitely going to be about healing and transcendence and, you know, moving on from subconscious blocks, things that have held us back for so long. And this eclipse cycle is going to be really about healing them, integrating them, and finally moving forward, finally overcoming these challenges that we've dealt with for likely decades. Like I said, like I had this channeled download that said something about moving on from decades worth of of trauma you know and the other part of this is too is something else i wanted to say really quick is there's this vicious circle that we get stuck in with taking action on the things that we desire and the success that we desire in our lives too and it's this kind of no sum game of qualification are am i qualified enough to be doing the thing i want to be doing or going after the thing that i want to be going after or helping other people with this thing that i went through like and so we don't start because we think that we're not qualified enough. We're not valuable enough. We don't have we don't have the thing that other people need, like whatever. But that's not true. It's kind of like the chicken or the egg. Like if you go through something and then you're like, I want to help others that are dealing with this, that already makes you qualified, right? Like you, you've been through it, right? It doesn't matter necessarily like, you know, like, oh, how it all went and whatever. It's like, no, I went through it. That makes me qualified to be able to talk about this like if you're gonna be you know doing like i don't know something crazy that you've never done before you'd probably want someone that has experience with it that has been there that has done it you know over someone that has no experience at all doesn't really know what they're talking about and is trying to tell you how to do it right like so you already have that experience but then you get even more experience by taking the action and actually doing the thing right so there was like you know a while there where i wanted to work with other creators entrepreneurs artists like soulpreneurs people on this soul path right that are helping people waking people up like activating people's freaking souls and helping them achieve success because i've been on this journey for six years now and i'm like i know a lot i've i've learned under a lot of mentors i've been in masterminds and like really big spaces with really successful people that are also you know, helping people wake the fuck up spiritually and, you know, live the lives of their dreams and like all of this stuff. And so I had all this wisdom and all this experience. And I was like, I really want to start helping, you know, other soulpreneurs like me or people aspiring to be because I've just, I've been through so much on this journey. I have so much wisdom to share and I've learned so much from others and all of that. But at first I was like, well, I've never done it before. So am I qualified to do it? It's like, I've never worked with someone, you know, with another like soulpreneur before, like through like a ongoing one-on-one -on -one mentorship experience at first. This is what I thought at first, right? And it's like, well, yeah, you haven't, but you want to do it. And I kept going back and forth, like, am I qualified? Even though I've been doing this for six years and I've studied under like numerous different mentors that are doing this and I've been learning from them and I'm on like, I'm constantly continuing my own journey and I have so much to share. And it's like, finally, I made the decision like, yeah, I want to I want to do this. And so I started doing it last year and I've worked with so many amazing, incredible, just freaking badass women, you know, women and men since then that are soulpreneurs and that are like literally following their light up and doing what they love or, you know, but maybe they, you know, were having burnout or maybe they like, you know, took a break from it or struggling to get back into it and like launch again and really like create that success in their lives again. Or maybe they fell out of love with it or maybe they were struggling with what to do, you know, like all these different things. And so, but if I wouldn't have started because I was in this conundrum, this paradox of like, well, I haven't worked with these people like I haven't worked with soulpreneurs in the beginning when I first you know made the decision to decide to do it like it's like well I haven't done it yet so can I do it well how are you ever gonna know if you're not freaking doing it like that's what this is about that's what this Aries energy is about think less move more <laughs> right like get out of your head get out of like all of the what ifs and all of the weighing it all out and just move right this is about moving this is about movement this is about taking action right taking mother freaking action right that's what's going to equate to success so Saturn and Mars conjunct in Pisces so I also don't see this as a major challenge like I feel like a lot of people are like oh this is a huge deal and this is a huge challenge and means that this this you know new moon solar eclipse is going to be challenging no I think this is like a reality check situation of us getting really freaking clear and taking spiritual responsibility for our part in things for our side in things for our wounds 
we may have not caused these wounds. We may have been the victim at one point in our lives. We may have had shitty things happen to us at one point in our lives, but it doesn't mean that we have to drag it out and keep staying there. Again, I see this as a huge, huge sign that there's a massive cycle here ending because a conjunction starts a new cycle. A conjunction is a new beginning as well. Right? So I don't see this as like, if this was an opposition, I'd be like, yeah, there's some massive challenging shit happening here. You know, there's a massive culmination point happening here and, you know, all of that. But I see this as us finally like coming into integration with things that maybe have been difficult and us like really knowing how to proceed forward. Yes, it still may feel like we're like we've like we're in the process of overcoming a challenging situation or starting a new beginning that feels challenging or that has us feeling like we're taking on more responsibility in some way. Um, so it's not like it's all like lovey-dovey, you know, and, and just great and blissful, right? But it is this new beginning, this new cycle, of us really integrating our will with responsibility. Decision and action, again, challenge and burden. So maybe we are taking on the burden because we're owning our part, something that maybe we've been trying to escape from or trying to neglect or something, right? It's being more compassionate as well about our burdens and our difficulties. That way we can integrate them. So yeah, I mean, some people may experience like delays or weird setbacks or like whatever, but it's really about accepting and surrendering to our own spiritual power. It's about realizing that we are the creator, that we have the will and we have the responsibility to create our lives. Our lives are our responsibility. We are the creator. We are the creators, right? Everything is creation. So this is like accepting spiritual responsibility for your life. That's how I see this. This is facing fears, facing burdens, facing things that have weighed us down with compassion and forgiveness acceptance and surrender and finally being able to heal move on and let go or integrate and transcend right it's going to be different for some people for some people it's like yes i'm finally letting this go i'm finally releasing this for other people it's like i need to just accept this and surrender to this and then that starts the process of healing and letting go right but either way these are the themes right it's coming into acceptance of being the creator overcoming things through with compassion surrendering to the things that you cannot control and also surrendering to the things that you can control. A lot of people miss that part because it's just like, oh, I can't control this, you know, but it's also accepting the things that you can control. And that's how I see this. Like, I see this playing out too, because a lot of the times we, we make up excuses like, oh, that wasn't in my control or I couldn't do anything about that. But it's like, we don't want to accept the things that we can control or that we do have a part in. And that's what this is about. Actually, I could have done something about that and I didn't. Actually, I can do this, but I didn't, you know? And so I'm going to now, it's like a spiritual discipline, right? It's like really coming into spiritual discipline within ourselves because our healing journey and our life is our responsibility. You may not be able to control what happened to you before, and all of that, but it is on you on how you move forward, how you heal, how you let go, if you want to keep repeating the same patterns or not, right? That's what this is about. So the other really exciting part of this, we're going to have Jupiter literally only a couple degrees away from its conjunction in Uranus, which is super exciting. This is like exciting blessings in disguise, especially wherever you have Taurus in your chart, which we're going to go over in a minute when we get to the signs. But this is like really coming into this like blessing in dis disguise, like out of nowhere, surprising, exciting, random, maybe even nerve wracking, like blessing that feels like it's coming in. It's going to feel like in a like in a like a surprise, a surprising, exciting abundance or opportunity or open door just kind of comes in. And it's like, oh, my gosh, like. I, I didn't expect this, or this is different, or this is random, or this isn't what I exactly thought. But yes, you know, like it's definitely more of an abundant positive energy unless you have like, you know, Pluto squaring this or something, you know, like, but still either way, I think that it's this like blessing in disguise kind of energy or exciting new path or opportunity or open door. It's us like really, I think, realizing and coming into this major revelation or download about our path in the Taurus area of our charts where we've been learning lessons for several years now with Uranus there and then Jupiter there the last like year or so. So it's like really kind of, you know, bringing in like an abundance of downloads, revelations, insights, you know, open doors, opportunities, new paths forward, all of that. So I'm really, really looking forward to how that pans out. And that's going to conjunct, you know, 
not long after the eclipse, it's going to come into its full conjunction. So even after April 8th, we're still going to be feeling that Jupiter Uranus energy. Definitely pay attention to that. So that is what I have to say about this solar eclipse. Let me know down below if you stayed this long. Number one, comment the word badass with your thoughts on this video and on the first part of this video and what you got from it and how you thought it was compared to other videos that you've seen, okay? Maybe it wasn't the best, okay? I started channeling Aries there in the beginning. I got a little competitive and <laughs> all of that in the beginning, but it's like, you know what? If you trigger people, fucking good. People need to be triggered. That gets them out of their comfort zone. It shows them the healing they still need to do. So we can't keep hiding ourselves in order to not trigger people. Like that's their own healing. That's their own journey. Just like you're taking responsibility for your own healing, for your own self-development, for your own journey. Other people, like that's, there's nothing that you can do. You can guide them through, right? Like you can definitely guide them through. But if you're walking on eggshells, trying not to trigger other people because of that, like how much of yourself are you going to keep boxing in to avoid triggering other people. Sometimes people need to be triggered. I love when I get triggered because it's like, ooh, okay. You know, it may not feel too great at first, but afterwards, once I calm down for a second, I'm like, oh, okay, damn, I didn't realize I still have that thing going on there. Or, oh, okay, here's a part of myself that I guess wants to be integrated now. You know, like that's what triggering really is. It's showing us a part of ourselves that wants to be integrated, that wants to come into our consciousness, right? And so when we can start thinking about it like that, it makes it a hell of a lot simpler, right? So stop trigger or stop worrying about triggering other people. <laughs> anyway, so I love you guys. Comment badass down below if you stayed this far. Also, if you need a reading right now and you want to get it while it's on sale, I'm only going to keep them on sale for another few days till the eclipse is over. So definitely book down below. If you would actually like to like come in and get like more than a reading, a little taste of my my world beyond just astrology and like actually work on becoming like the most magical magnetic version of you and going after the things that you desire, going after your goals, like growing your business or going after the things that you love in some way, even if you don't have a business, but you identify with being like a creator, healer, artist, someone into self-development, you're definitely, definitely, definitely a really, really good fit for my membership, Co-Creatrix. It's a low ticket membership. It's literally $111 a month and we have such an incredibly magical group of supportive women in there you guys like it's insane we have creators we have entrepreneurs we have business owners we have coaches mentors content creators like just so many different you know people women in so many different places and it's just so magical and so if that's something that you're interested in uh, definitely see the link down below if you have any questions just reach out to me i so be glad to answer any questions that you have. Um, and if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one mentorship right now, like long-term mentorship, like, you know, sometimes I do like one month special. So if you wanna just try it out at first, that's fine. But I also, but other than that, I do like three month and six month packages. So if you're looking for more like transformational, I wanna work with you one-on-one, -on -one, like really get deep, really get into it, make a quantum leap happen in my life, get into my magic, love who I am, like be confident as fuck and make magical shit happen and blow the fuck up in my life, in my business, with my goals, with my relationships, like all the things, reach out to me. There's a link below where you can book a one-on-one -on -one free consultation with me for 15 to 30 minutes to just kind of get to know each other, see if my one-on-one -on -one packages would be right for you and yeah. If that feels like a, a fuck yes to you, definitely do that. Let's go ahead and get into what this solar eclipse means for the rising sign. Alrighty, starting with you, Aries, since this is happening in your sign, you are the star of the show. <laughs> you are the star of the show. Just own it. Just look at the world as your runway and you are just being you and everybody's talking about you and you just need to love it. Okay, like you just need to find a way to love it. Find a way to love it. Don't get brought down by any haters. Just find a way to embrace it. Everything is about you. If you didn't listen to the first part of this video, you're going to love it because that's all about you too, okay? So uh, if you were a little impatient, a little impulsive and skipped ahead, definitely go back. Go back. You can listen to this first if you want, but go back, okay? You're not going to want to miss it. You're going to love it. So anyways, <laughs> this solar eclipse is happening in your mother effing sign Aries. So, you know, with this being in your first house, if you're an Aries rising, right, this is going to relate more if you're a rising. Like, I always do rising signs because that's your true actual, like I'm reading your true actual chart, um, the way that your chart is set up from your rising sign. So, 
this is happening in your first house. So this is definitely about you. This is definitely about the individual. And I know I keep saying it, but you definitely need to watch the first part of this video. This is definitely about your individuality, your sovereignty, your your just sense of self, your perception of yourself and where it has been where it has been bruised, wounded, brought down by things that you've went through in your life. Because the solar eclipse is conjunct Chiron, you're really seeing where maybe you've been kind of swept away into the wounds where you've allowed other things, maybe other people, other experiences throughout your life to really damage your perception of yourself and your identity, who you are as a person. This new moon is offering you a new beginning, a really, really big, 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 big new chapter, new era of who you are and you embracing these vulnerabilities, you embracing these insecurities that maybe you've been fighting or in conflict with forever. Maybe you've seen them as a weakness. Maybe you've been trying to hide them. Maybe you've been trying to like get rid of them. You know, this is like decades worth of healing happening in this solar eclipse and you know with the ruling planet your ruling planet mars your chart ruler and the 12th like really coming up on saturn like real hot and heavy you know this is really like you taking responsibility for your own healing your own life no longer relying on other people depending on other people depending on your circumstances blaming other people being in any kind of victim consciousness you know like just letting that shit go transcending it healing it integrating it like you taking spiritual responsibility for your life like you may be doing some really big subconscious like reset work where it's like I'm no longer going to be under this spell of delusion of like what other people expect from me or want from me or you know thinking too much about what other people are gonna think or like whatever like it's really you like standing tall in your individuality standing tall in yourself coming back to yourself like allowing yourself to be vulnerable and seeing that as a strength because it's not about the vulnerability it's about you it's about who you are and you can be vulnerable because you are you you can rock vulnerability and make it a new trend okay like you can literally make vulnerability the new trend if you wanted right like because you are you you are the trailblazer you are the pioneer you are the trendsetter right so embracing these aspects of about yourself like really coming back into like that belief within yourself that full sense of like seeing and feeling and embodying your worth seeing that you're worthy seeing that you know you have so much value with venus in your sign right this is so huge also with uh uranus and jupiter coming into their conjunction in your your second house this is also really about like exciting new maybe random or surprising opportunities and open doors coming in financially for you um coming in in terms of your assets your wealth your your values your priorities you know the things that you own like just new exciting things happening here for you a lot of expansion and abundance happening here for you if you're an aries rising so I love this for you. I love this for you. You are really learning to like embrace the truth of who you are, speak your truth, express yourself, really fully embody who you are and let things go. Let the past go. Let go of any like, you know, old shit from the past, old grudges, old enemies, old, you know, whatever, like learn to forgive, be more compassionate, uh, you know, with yourself, with your life, with your past, the things that you've been through all of that and that's what's going to really heal you so that's what i'm seeing for you if you're in aries rising again watch the freaking beginning okay like don't say it didn't warn you it's fucking good it's fucking good if you want to activate your soul you need to listen to that okay so and if you would like a reading that is linked down below if you would like to uh inquire about other things my membership working with me one-on-one -on -one for coaching or anything like that that is all linked down below so i love you guys happy solar eclipse Alrighty, taurus rising this solar eclipse is happening in your 12th house of your subconscious, different parts of yourself, different parts of your independence, your sovereignty, your individuality that have been kind of in a subconscious program to some extent where you have kind of hidden certain things about yourself or repressed certain things about yourself or there's been certain things in the shadows trying to get your attention maybe even through triggers maybe even through random outbursts or reactions you know things like that like there's been a lot trying to get your attention subconsciously lately and this new moon is coming in as a massive subconscious and spiritual reset for you to really become aware of who you are and integrate these subconscious parts of you that you've rejected or denied or hid, things like that, right? Now, this is a lot about healing, a lot about subconscious work, a lot about, you know, things kind of 
being let go of major, major cycles kind of ending and coming to a close that, you know, you've been dealing with for potentially decades or years or whatever, right? So this is about you like fully embracing, you know, the, the things, the wounds, the old stuff, the, the insecurities, the vulnerabilities, the quote unquote weaknesses you think you have, like you really integrating that and becoming really, really aware of that during this time. Your dreams could be telling you a lot and showing you a lot and have really potent messages for you around this time, right? So we also have Mars and Saturn coming into their conjunction which really kind of ties into this solar eclipse because Mars rules this eclipse in your 11th house. So this could definitely be showing you some of these like subconscious parts of yourself through other people in your life, through different friend groups, through people online, through different communities and groups and, you know, associations and acquaintances and stuff like that that you have through your network in some way. This is also you like kind of taking responsibility for your dreams and your aspirations, like you really stepping up to the plate and taking on maybe a new responsibility or making a new commitment to like the the direction you desire to go in in terms of community network acquaintances your dreams your aspirations maybe social media online things like that so this is you like really maybe potentially making a big commitment to yourself and realizing more of the depths of who you are and this like realizing more <clears throat> of what's going on beneath the surface with you and really coming to terms with that integrating that right um i have a friend who's in a mastermind that i'm in um, who's a Taurus rising and we were talking and I know she's dealing with a lot of these things and um, the movie Black Swan is so good for shadow work and like you could be noticing like things of shadow work coming up but it's such a good movie that kind of portrays shadow work of like integrating that other part of you that like you try to hide or that you think is self-destructive or that you think is you know gonna steer you wrong somehow but it's like really just the aspects of that personality that you have within you or that other part of you within you like those are what wants to be integrated it's not necessarily the behaviors or the actions it's like the aspects the parts of that personality that are gold and that are actually a part of who you are but have been repressed or forgotten <clears throat> so that could be really what's coming up for you during this time and then we also have jupiter and uranus conjunct in your first house which is also really nice <laughs> so this is you like expanding and randomly just like feeling this like excitement and this expansion and this you know abundance that's like really coming to fruition in your life and you really seeing like your value and the gifts and the the value that you have to offer to the world and to yourself you know like it's really kind of you seeing your own value in a really heightened like electrifying you know uh maybe even unexpected way and so that is what i'm seeing for you for your taurus rising let me know down below if this related with you i'd really really love to hear your feedback as always and also i do have a sale going on in my readings right now for eclipse season so if you'd like to check those out see that down in the description below and then also if you'd like to check out more of the things that I offer my membership, my one-on-one um, -on -one mentorship. Go check that out down below as well. Love you. Gemini darling, this solar eclipse for you is happening in your 11th house of friends, alliances, acquaintances, networking, groups of people, social media, putting yourself out there, audiences, things like this, where you connect with others, right? And so the solar eclipse is you know, maybe not as, you know, like on and popping for you <laughs> just because it is in your 11th house, but it could be showing you, it, like it still doesn't mean it's like not impacting you, but it just may not be as intense, right? But it's still showing you a lot about like your dreams, your aspirations, your vision for where you're going and where you've allowed certain wounds, certain burdens, certain perspectives or perceptions of yourself or others to really hold you back and box you in right and so this is you like really embodying your full potential and really overcoming some of those challenges and burdens that you've been faced with this is also tying in your 10th house so this is so much about your future your career where you're going your legacy you know your direction in life what feels like your destiny and your purpose and you really making a big commitment here taking you know taking on a, a big commitment making a big commitment making a big decision like being like taking on responsibility and accountability for your life and your direction in life and where you want to go and what you desire and what you dream of and and how you're envisioning your future and where you're going right this is so big this is so much about your vision this is so much about like where's your career at what are you doing what's the direction you're going in what legacy do you want to leave behind what do you see for your future how are other people involved in that how are you how are other players involved in that connecting you to that do you have alliances acquaintances connections 
patients, like people that are, you know, in this? Are you thinking about becoming a leader and leading other people or are you already leading other people? You know, like things like this, this is could also be like, you know, you joining a space with like other people and somehow they're going to help you advance your your career and your vision. This could be, you know, marketing, like all of these different kinds of things you could be noticing come up with this solar eclipse right now. It's it's definitely a very future oriented, you know, uh, social oriented, you know, event for you. So that's basically what's happening for you if you're a Gemini rising. It's very future oriented. It's also very much about connecting with others, how others help you get there and where that's been wounded by maybe events in the past or different things in the past and where you're kind of you know, learning to trust yourself and stand on your own two feet, maybe be a trailblazer, a pioneer, a trendsetter, just because other people aren't doing it or don't have the, you know, same desires or urges or whatever that you have doesn't mean that you can't own and embody that and be the influence, right? And so let me know down below if that resonates, Gemini, and let me also know that, you know, your your rising sign that you're a Gemini rising. So I know like what which horoscope that you're talking about. I'd love to hear your feedback and how you're noticing this eclipse coming up for you. And if you missed the beginning, go back and watch it because it will activate the fuck out of you. It was I was not playing in the beginning, okay, honey? So you need to go back and watch that, okay? And and then also, if you would like a reading, my readings are on sale right now for this eclipse. So you can click the link below if you're interested in my membership or one on one mentorship. That's also linked down below. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Cancer, darling, welcome to your solar eclipse reading, boo. I hope you're doing well, my Cancer rising. So, this solar eclipse is happening in your 10th mother effing house. Okay. So, this is very, very much about your future, your legacy what you came here to accomplish on this earth and this is you getting really really freaking fired up about it okay boo this is you really seeing where you've had some burdens some vulnerabilities some insecurities some worthiness wounds some wounds around like proving yourself or something that have really been holding you back and these are coming in to be integrated into your conscious mind so they can stop holding you back and fucking with your life okay because you have career goals professional goals worldly goals that you are here to do you're here to change the world in a big way you are here to go towards the direction of your desire you are here to go towards your goals. You are here to pioneer a path. You are here to, to make a big freaking difference. You are here to be the pioneer, the trendsetter, the, the trailblazer. And this is really, really huge for this eclipse for you. It's really bringing you back into that archetype and showing you like just because you don't have all your shit together or just because you have these like wounds or these vulnerabilities or these insecurities regarding your career and regarding how you show up in the world and your your reputation or what's happened to you in your life doesn't mean that you still can't trailblaze, that you still can't make a huge difference. And actually, these may be the reason why you are able to make a huge difference in life and in the world and in your career and in your professional life and in your goals, whatever they are, even if you're not like, I don't, Tani, I don't want to make a huge difference in the world. Like, that's fine too. You know, this still can relate to you. And the, and the fact that like, when you start seeing your vulnerabilities and your quote unquote weaknesses as the thing that sets you apart and as the thing that makes you different and as the reason why you're, why you can be successful in whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, that's when it's like boom. So this is you really aligning with your destiny in so many ways, especially if you have your mid heaven and your 10th house. Like this is you really aligning with your destiny, really aligning with your purpose. With Venus here, it's going to feel really beautiful, creative, artistic. It's going to feel like, you know, things are coming together. Like, you know, the train outside of my house right now. <laughs> It's going to feel like things are merging. Things are coming together, you know? It's like that train is just like, freaking go for it. Just freaking go for it. Yeah, it might take a little while, but like take the action. Take the leap of faith. Like stop allowing your insecurities and your thoughts on like why you can't do it or why it's not going to work. Like hold you back, right? Like this is your vision, right? And this is also Mars and Saturn conjunct in your ninth house. Like really saying like, this is the commitment you're making to yourself. Some of you guys could be making a big commitment to your dreams, to your destiny, to your goals, to yourself, to your long-term future, to your education, continuing your education, to you taking responsibility for your vision and your life. Like I have this concept in my work, this energetic code that really came through last year called, that I call big vision energy. Because when you're in that big vision energy, like Taylor Swift is in big vision energy, right? Like she's 
literally in big vision energy, a lot of the most successful people have this. They have this big vision freaking energy where they are visionaries, right? Like they can see ahead of the current circumstances, their current reality. They face challenges with optimism and with like, oh, this is adding to my, <laughs> this is adding to my resume of like why I'm even more qualified for what I'm doing, you know? Like they, they are so optimistic because they are ahead. They are visionaries. They are visionary thinkers like Apple visionaries, right? Like people ahead of their time, right? And so anyways, this ninth house energy is like big vision energy, right? This 10th house energy is like big vision energy. It's like, where are you going? What's your direction? What are you moving towards? Like, what is your vision? What do you want? And where have you been holding yourself back? you know, that you don't need to anymore. And like Jupiter and Uranus are conjunct in your 11th house of friends, networking, groups of people. It's like you really coming to like big, abundant, valuable, potent revelations on your people, on maybe like an opportunity comes through a person that you know, or you connect with, or like a network, you know, that you're like, you know, a community or a network that you're kind of associated with. Like this could definitely be bringing up like big, unexpected opportunities like that are really valuable that you know really help you in getting what you want a lot of you could be making a big decision to like travel to continue your education to invest in mentorship to be a teacher to be a mentor you know something like that um you know which if you are if you are thinking about being a mentor or you're already a mentor um definitely sign up for my membership because it's definitely for you <laughs> and it's my low ticket membership for like solopreneurs, mentors, coaches, etc. Um, creatives that are here to like help other people and have that big vision energy and here to like make a difference and all of that. And so anyways, but you are doing future shit here. Like you are operating in future tense here. Like it's like, how do you want to look back on your freaking life, right? Like how do you want to look back and remember this time? What story do you want to tell about this time? Live your life in that way now so you can look back and tell the story how you want to tell it <laughs> rather than like, oh, life was happening to me. And it's just like, oh, it sucked. I gave up, you know? Like, no, like I flipped the freaking script. Like the odds were against me and like I freaking did it. Like you're on a hero's journey. Like you are moving towards your future. You're moving towards the goals that you want to accomplish in your life. And this is a, a solar eclipse that's really starting a new era with that for you where it's like it can bring a lot of healing, but it can also show you where you still have things that you need to integrate and bring into your awareness. Okay. So that's what this is about if you're a Cancer rising. And um, yeah, let me know below if that resonated with you. If that felt like, oh yeah, definitely girl. <laughs> let me know down below and also if you would like to book a personal reading with me those are on sale right now for a very short amount of time not too much longer so click the link in my bio to book one of those and then also I have a couple spots open for one-on-one -on -one mentorship if you're wanting to like work together more intensely for you know your long-term vision for your success to activate your soul again and quantum leap in your life and your business and your relationships like all of it definitely click the link below and then uh there's also the option of my membership as well um which is a more low ticket option you get a ton though when you sign up so <laughs> you get a ton and a community of other mentors entrepreneurs you know if you relate with me and you relate with a lot of the things i say in my videos etc this is the membership for you. So see all that below. I love you guys. Happy solar eclipse cancer. Alrighty, my fellow Leo risings, darlings. How are we? Let me know down below how you are hanging in there during this eclipse season as your fellow Leo rising sister over here. I want to know. Okay. I want to know. I want to know how you're doing. So make sure to check in down below. Okay. And if you didn't watch the beginning of this, don't be cheating. You need to go back and watch it. Okay. So, okay. This Aries solar eclipse on Chiron <laughs> in our ninth house. So we are definitely seeing a bigger vision for ourselves here. This is about really envisioning what we desire for our future, getting very clear and direct with it, and also kind of seeing and bringing into our consciousness the wounds, the burdens, the maybe identity issues, the, you know, different insecurities, the different you know, vulnerabilities, the different quote unquote weaknesses that hold us back from going after the thing that our soul is calling us to do, whether that is traveling, whether that is teaching, whether that is mentorship, whether that is going back to school, continuing your education in some way, shape or form, right? Whether that is like following your beliefs. This is so much about you believing in yourself, 
you believing in yourself so much that you are here to like conquer this freaking vision that you have and show up to it and like utter freaking conviction like you are not playing around you are a visionary that is going to war for your vision okay that is what this new moon solar eclipse is all about for you you are pioneering a new way a new educational process or educational pursuit you are seeing things from a higher perspective this is about tapping into your god self your god mind and out of like the basic ordinary shit of your day-to-day -day life and seeing things from a way higher higher level so you are being drawn from your soul to go on this journey to have this experience to really dive deep into your educational pursuits your spiritual pursuits what it is that you believe in life and how those beliefs dictate what you see in the world and your worldview how you perceive the world your perspective on the world like all of that right where you're going in life what your vision is for your life what you're what you want your future to look like like this is about really saying yes to that soul calling and going on the freaking journey even if you're it's painful sometimes even if you have some doubts even if you have some wounds like it's not sitting there and waiting to heal every wound until you can go like no it's like you need the experience you need the movement you need the action that's what's going to change you that's what's going to heal you that's what's going to like light a fire under your soul so like where are you putting off saying yes and deciding to this soul journey and taking action because you feel like you're not good enough or you feel like you don't have what it takes or you know you're caught in this qualification cycle like i talked about in the you know in the the first part of the video like i'm a leo rising so everything i said in the first part is probably gonna hit you in some way so may just activate your soul you never know you know like so this is huge there's a lot of like financial stuff coming up with this too and career stuff coming up with this it's like what is your path like you have to trailblaze your own path and you can learn from others and all of that but you also have to like know yourself know thyself because that is what's going to take you down your own path and like you're you're a way paver you're a trailblazer like you are you know like doing something big in your life or like wanting to do something big in your life and going after it and you're on this journey right we have the jupiter uranus conjunction happening in your t in our in our 10th house of career so this is a lot of like unexpected like twists and turns and abundance and opportunities and doors opening coming in for our career our reputation things that maybe we've been building towards throughout you know the last year or so that are finally like popping off and, and surprising us left and right and then we also have you know like this this mars saturn conjunction in our eighth house it's so like making clear big decisions around our finances debt you know financial decisions like you know giving and receiving in terms of the financial realm and sorting that out and like making huge commitments to ourselves maybe making a big investment or drawing a line in the sand with a financial partner or like whatever it's like we are making really big decisions we're taking responsibility for our finances for our life for our debt, for our decisions, for what we want out of life so we can heal these different things and move forward and find our purpose. Like the ninth house is so much about purpose and potential and the limitless and like the, the higher self, the higher mind, the higher perspective and experiencing life and going through the experience because that's what gives us the wisdom. The ninth house is about experience and wisdom. The third house is about knowledge and the things that kind of keep us in our comfortable baseline environment, right? So this is us really like craving that new experience and like going on that journey. Let me know down below, obviously, if this is relating with you guys, if you're Leo rising and what you're noticing coming up for this new moon solar eclipse. And if you need some help or you would like to find some things out or you've got some desires on your heart that you would like to get a little bit more clear on, you'd like to get activated, you'd like to come back to yourself so you can make some bad ass shit happen. You'd like to figure out what that next step is in your relationship, your career, your business, whatever. My readings are linked below. If you would like to book, there is a sale. It won't be going on for too much longer. And uh, also, I have a couple spots open for a one-on-one -on -one coaching right now. Jump on a free call with me, see if we're a good fit. And I also have my membership. So if you are a solopreneur, a creator, an artist, you're into self-development and you look at this like your purpose, your spiritual journey, like you're here to freaking like build a legacy to help people to change the world, to awaken other people's souls, to like really, really make a difference here on the planet. My membership is for you. You will freaking love it and the community inside there. All of that is linked down below. I love you guys. Let me know how you're feeling this and go watch the beginning if you didn't watch it, okay? 
Love you. All right, to you, Virgo rising. Welcome to your horoscope for this Aries Mother Effing Solar Eclipse. This badass solar eclipse happening in your eighth Mother Effing House, Bill. So this is you getting really independent and sovereign with your finances. This is you making some big deal decisions, taking responsibility for your life, your relationships, your finances could be on the other hand though your partner or someone in your life that you have financial ties to doing that as well so it could either be you or another person in your life but either way this involves taking some big deal action making some big deal commitments decisions investments in terms of you know relationships commitments and finances right this is like really what this is tied into relationships and finances for you this is you really like bringing into conscious where you bringing into your consciousness and trying to show you where you have triggers and wounds and vulnerabilities and insecurities about finances and about taking ownership and taking the lead and owning your part and seeing your triggers here you know the things that may be kind of subconscious to you or that you may not always notice about yourself and in your life and so it's really you fully coming into that and owning that and uh seeing that you know is what this energy likely is trying to get you to do but it could be playing out through another person triggering this right so this is a huge new beginning like a huge new spiritual reset for you where it's like okay like this is what i want and i'm not gonna keep dilly dallying around it i'm not gonna keep like acting like i need to feel sorry for it or whatever like this is what i want this is what i'm gonna do i'm taking action on it and i need to make some different decisions moving forward i need to take on some maybe some burdens or responsibilities or whatever especially in terms of relationships to do this thing right there could also be like some really exciting expansive opportunities or doors open happening for you in terms of education travel um like opening your higher mind to new things opening your beliefs you know your world views to new things as well with uranus and jupiter conjunct in your ninth house so let me know down below virgo if that is resonating with you guys if you're seeing any of these things happen if you're noticing any of these themes and if you did not watch the, the first part of this video you definitely want to do that because you're missing out it will activate you and it will likely relate with you in a lot of ways so definitely go watch that and then also i do have my readings on sale for this solar eclipse won't be lasting much longer only in the next few days so book down below if you would like to get more of a personalized reading on whatever your heart desires during this time and then i also have a couple spaces opening for one-on-one -on -one mentorship if you would like to really take the fuck off in your life feel like your badass confident magical self and achieve massive success in all areas of your life from doing so okay um so that link is down to down below if you want to book a free call with me and see if we're a good fit for one-on-one -on -one mentorship and then also i have a membership if you are interested which is really spicy and really juicy where you get tons 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 from me um really in the spiritual self-development and entrepreneurship department it's like really for solopreneurs creators and artists to like that are really on this journey to like embody embodying their most like unapologetic magical badass selves and make a difference in the world at the same time so if any of that interests you see the link down below let me know down below as well what you're feeling for this eclipse i love you Bye. libra 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 risings babes this is a solar eclipse for you man this is one solar eclipse for you okay a lot of stuff going on with relationships here if you didn't watch the first part of this video you are definitely missing out but for now, I will say there's a lot going on with relationships here. Big new spiritual beginning reset, whatever you want to call it with relationships, okay? Huge new rebirth happening with relationships where either you or the person that you're with or people that you're involved with are really embracing the things that used to weigh them down in some way. So either you are embracing like certain insecurities or vulnerabilities that you used to have in terms of like relationships or other people, other like triggers, whatever, like you are kind of learning to embrace these things and come out of your shell and really like be more of this like Aries archetype and your relationships of like being more sovereign and independent and like you know action taker kind of energy or your partner or someone else in your life could be kind of embodying this right where they are embracing more of this or they are getting vulnerable or this is like a new vulnerable beginning for them of them really embracing certain parts of themselves that maybe they haven't in a while right and so either way that's kind of the theme here it's really really big on relationships like that's the main main focus here but you also have mars the ruler of this eclipse with saturn in your sixth house of day-to-day -day routines health and you know the tasks that you do on a day-to-day -day basis your job your work etc so there could be like some kind of 
project that you're working on or a really big decision or commitment or responsibility that's happening in terms of your work life, your health, your day-to-day routines. Like there could be a very clear line in the sand moment, very big new beginning happening here. You kind of coming to terms with something and starting new with something. Um, So that could definitely be it as well. You're learning to integrate trust, heal, um, you know, transcend some of these things, forgive some of these things, be more compassionate with yourself or with coworkers, whatever. We also have Jupiter and Uranus coming into their conjunction in your eighth house, which is like really like giving this like eccentric new opportunity, like doors open, abundance kind of energy in your eighth house. So it's gonna be a really great time for like surprise you know, money coming in or surprise investment or something like that, right? So something really positive, though, is definitely happening in terms of your financial investment area of life. So that is something to look forward to. So anyways, let me know down below, Libra, what you are noticing, if these things are coming up from you. And if you missed the first part of this, you're missing out on the juice of this video. So definitely, definitely go watch it. And if you would like more of a personalized, like transformational experience of a chart reading, definitely book a reading with me down below the last few days that my readings are on sale. And uh, also I have a couple mentorship options open right now. If you're looking for more than just a reading, if you're looking for some deep transformation, some, you know, embracing your magic, confidence, badassery, and really like turning up the success in all areas of your life, right? That is what my mentorship is for. And then I also have my membership. So if you're like a solopreneur, creator, artist, and you like, this is like your life's work, and this feels like your purpose, like your soul's mission, and you are here to help other people, my membership is for you. So I love you. All the links are down below if you want to visit them. Let me know how you're feeling this eclipse and I will see you in the next one. Alrighty, Scorpio, welcome to this solar eclipse reading for your rising sign. So this solar eclipse for you is happening in your sixth house, boo. So this is all about you really embracing the different quote unquote weaknesses, vulnerabilities, and insecurities in your job and your work and in your productivity and your day-to-day life, getting things done, your health, your workout routines, like the day-to-day physical life stuff, like your productivity, your task, like this is like a massive new reset here that you could really see coming in where like you are really embracing things that maybe used to once be looked at by you as wrong or a weakness or insecurity or whatever. It's like you kind of like using your pain as your power, so to say, right? And it's like you capitalizing off of those things, you stepping into that like new momentum in your life and your job, like this just like brand new, new beginning, new start, new reset, new energy, like feeling more confident in those things, feeling more confident in yourself. And there's so much here too with like passion and finding your passion, finding your joy, finding your pleasure, finding the things that just feel creative, artistic, like fulfilling to you with Mars and Saturn conjunct in your fifth house. Else. could also be a theme of like children, dating, romance, play, etc. This is like a huge decision line in the sand moment as well with Mars and Saturn conjunct here of like maybe there's a new passion or something to do with children or something to do with dating. It's like a responsibility that you're taking on or a burden that you're taking on um, that it's not like a burden in like a bad way, but it's just like it's like a trade-off or something, right? It's like, I'm going to commit to this or even just a commitment that you're making. Like there could be some heaviness involved, but it doesn't have to be like necessarily a bad thing. It's like you're taking responsibility for your inspiration, for your joy, for your happiness um, in some way, right? Also, we have Jupiter and Uranus conjunct in your seventh house. So this definitely could be like an exciting, random, unexpected opportunity or open door coming here with relationships or another person in your life. I mean, it could just be even in like a, a commitment or a business partner contract, something like that, but it looks very nice or something like really beneficial and positive happening for your partner or to your partner that really benefits them in some way. So that is what I'm seeing for you if you're a Scorpio rising. If you missed the beginning of this, you definitely need to go back and watch it, okay? Because you're missing out on a lot, like seriously, like it will activate you and relate with you in a lot of ways. So definitely go back and watch that. If you are looking for some more like personalized transformational guidance, then definitely get on booking my readings down below. There's only a few days left of the sale. So definitely get on that if you are interested. I also have other things listed down below, one-on-one mentorship, my membership, like all of that. So if you are interested, see the links below. I love you, Scorpio. Happy solar eclipse. Alrighty, Sagittarius. Welcome to your solar eclipse reading, boo. If you didn't watch the beginning, you need to fucking go watch because your soul's gonna get activated. You're missing out on a lot, okay? So you can watch this, but then go watch the beginning if you didn't. So this solar eclipse is happening in your fifth house. So this is about your passion, your play, your pleasure, 
the things that you do for fun, you know, maybe even sports or challenges or competitions, like things that you're doing for leisure, right? Maybe dating, children, things like this, topics like this could be coming up and any burdens, insecurities, vulnerabilities that you've had with these topics are really being brought to the surface around this time for you to integrate. This is an integration with the subconscious with these insecurities, vulnerabilities, etc. So you can finally reset your life in this, in this area of your life and finally start feeling like you can move on and you don't have to feel guilty for having fun or being in pleasure or you know having leisure time or doing the things that you love to do this is about really like a time period a new era of you doing what you love of you doing what feels good for you of you embracing your inner child of you embracing the things that like really make you feel good and bring happiness and joy into your life right so this is huge. It could also be bringing up dating and sexuality and romance and children and things like that too. So those are other topics you could notice with this. So we also have Mars and Saturn conjunct in your fourth house, which is really bringing in this like family, home, past, you know, uh, private life dynamic, right? Into this as well. So this could be like a massive decision, commitment, um, responsibility that you are taking on during this time to do with your home, family, private life, personal life, etc. So that's something that could really be coming pl to play here or like a new cycle starting here, like an ending and beginning starting here with that, where you are like overcoming something that has been challenging for you or you are finally like releasing something that has been challenging for you um, and, and integrating something there or, you know, finally just taking on some kind of responsibility for this area of your life or releasing control, you know, in some way. And so that could be happening. And then we also have Jupiter and Uranus conjunct in your sixth house, really bringing in like this open door, this new opportunity, like a lot of maybe unexpected abundance coming in here in terms of your work, health and day-to-day -day routines. So this could be like a new position opening up at work where you getting, you know, some kind of like you know, new inspiration in terms of your, your, your projects and the things that you're working on. Are you finally making some random unexpected progress with your health? You know, like something like this, there's definitely some positive, exciting news coming in here in terms of, or some positive, exciting inspiration or like open doors coming in here, uh, with your sixth house of work, health and day-to-day -day routine. So watch out for that. So let me know down below, Sag, what you are noticing come up for the solar eclipse. If any of this resonates, I'd really, really, really love to hear your feedback and what's happening for you. And then also, if you would like to book a reading and get a little more personal and really get some kind of transformational experience, feel like, okay, this is what I'm going through. This is, this is who I am again, you know, like really get your own desires kind of read for. My personal readings are on sale for a very short amount of time. Go click the link in my bio if you would like to book. They are super affordable right now, so you don't want to miss this. And then also, I have a couple of one-on-one -on -one spaces open right now um, for mentorship, ongoing mentorship to really like tap into your most confident, badass, freaking magical self, set your soul on fire, achieve success, and 10x your freaking life in all areas. So if that interests you, see the description below as well. I love you guys let me know down below how things are going for you and we're gonna move on to the next sign capricorn darling welcome to this airy solar eclipse horoscope for you this is happening in your fourth house of home family private life your past your your ancestry your roots the foundation of your life right what's going on behind closed doors so this solar eclipse is conjunct Chiron. So this is like, this is definitely a little more deeper for you than other signs. It's definitely deep. Okay. It's deep. It's definitely bringing up, you know, this cycle potentially of like wounding and healing this, these patterns of insecurity, vulnerability, not feeling good enough, all of these different kind of like more sensitive things in terms of you and your family and how that impacts you and your identity and how you show up in your life and in the world. And so you're probably noticing this kind of cycle, these kind of patterns, these kind of, you know, things coming up with your family or people that you live with or people that you're close to that, you know, you you consider family and how that's in affecting you and your life, how that's affecting you and your home life, your living situation, all of that. So this new moon, solar eclipse, you know, on Chiron is a huge, big reset here for you, your family, your ancestry, like everything, right? It's really you like stepping into your power, turning your pain into power, really knowing how to alchemize this and step into this and take action and, and make moves that maybe you weren't previously making. You know, it's like you kind of taking charge of maybe a family situation, a private situation, a personal situation in your life. Also with Mars and Saturn conjunct in your third, this could have something to do with you like expressing yourself. This could have something to do with your siblings 
things, your community, <clears throat> your neighborhood, your environment, your your extended family members, aunts, uncles, cousins, things like that as well. It's you like really kind of stepping it up in some way, I really feel like, which ends up being a really healing thing for you that maybe you didn't expect or a really healing thing for your family. It's like there's like some kind of karmic thing here coming back around, I feel, where it's like I can do the same thing I did before that didn't work or the same thing like, you know, my family before me has done or I can do something different and take charge and step up. And I feel like that's really coming in here for you. So let me know down below if that's relating. And then also you have Jupiter and Uranus in your fifth house. So like creativity, inspiration, doing the things that you love, working on your art, working on the things that like really bring you joy and pleasure really is feeling good for you right now and could bring in a lot of open doors, unexpected opportunities, you feeling really just inspired and creative and artistic. So that's going really good on the other side of things. So let me know down below Capricorn what you are feeling right now, what you are noticing. And if you would like more of a personalized reading and to really like have that breakthrough, you know, get whatever you desire, like get a reading for whatever you desire in your life right now. My readings are on sale for only a little bit longer. So definitely make sure you book in the next few days if you'd like to get a personal reading with me. And then also I have a few spaces open for one-on-one -on -one mentorship for coaching and mentorship to basically transform your whole fucking life. Okay. Like this is like stepping into your magic, stepping into your confidence, stepping into your like soul on fire era that ends up rippling into every other area of your life. Like you 10 extra results in every other area everything shifts so if you are looking for that right now see the links below i also have a membership that you can start with if you want to start with something kind of low or if you want to get a free consultation you can do that so all of that's linked down below i love you guys let me know how you're feeling for this eclipse and i will see you in the next one Alrighty, aquarius darling this solar eclipse for you is happening in your third house so this is more of your environment, your extended family, siblings, cousins, neighbors, community, short trips, short travels, things like that. But what I really feel here with the solar eclipse happening on Chiron, because the third house is a little finicky, there's like a lot of different things it can deal with, so it's not always easy to pinpoint what thing it's playing out as for many people, but... I feel like with this solar eclipse on Chiron, this is you really seeing your perception of yourself, how you show up in the world, how this affects your thinking, your mindset, and, you know, how this affects your environment and what you surround yourself with, the people around you, the environments around you, the places you go, the different environment around you, right? So, Chiron here, it's really about like healing your voice as well, healing your sense of self-expression, healing your sense of like, you know, identity where it is like, you know, in a sextile with your sign as well, especially if you have your ascendant like, you know, anywhere between like 15 and 25 degrees, like, you know, so this is really about like you coming into a different side of yourself, you coming into like, okay, like, is it safe for me to speak and express my vulnerabilities, my insecurities? Is it safe for me to be in these environments? you know, where I feel maybe stretched past my capacity or to do these different things in my day-to-day -day life, to continue to participate in these different environments and in these different things in my day-to-day -day life, in these different mindsets and perspectives in my day-to-day -day life. Like, where are you noticing that there are some insecurities, vulnerabilities, sensitivities that you are overcoming and where can you own those and be more honest and upfront about those in the way that you express yourself and speak in the environments that you go into basically, right? That's really what a lot of this is about. Um, <clears throat> also with you know, Mars and Saturn conjunct in your second house, there's some major decisions happening here in terms of your money, your finances, your assets, the things that you own, your resources, major decisions happening here, you really taking the lead, taking responsibility, or, um, you know, letting go of something that's maybe out of your control even, or even healing something to do with finances, money, etc. So this is all kind of coming up here. And then also Jupiter and Uranus are conjunct in your fourth house. So this could be kind of like a pleasant surprise happening. Um, in terms of like family, home life, private life, where you are, I mean, it could be something, I feel like it's something positive because Jupiter is involved. So it could be abundant, benefic, um, inspirational. This could be like, a, you know, you finally getting the house that you've wanted, especially with like Mars and Saturn. It's like you're making this commitment. You're making this big decision. Maybe you're taking on a risk or you're taking on a sense of burden to do it. But it's like, this is what you dream of. It's like something that you've really envisioned is like almost like coming to life. It can feel like a miracle or like it can feel like a blessing, you know? And so something like that could definitely be happening around, you know, like the next week or two as well after the solar eclipse. So let me know what you're noticing, Aquarius. Come up here. I'd really love to hear your feedback 
and what you're noticing with the solar eclipse, how it's affecting you. And if you would like to get a personal reading um, and all that, definitely see the link below. I'm also offering some one-on-one -on -one mentorship right now, spots available, you know, so definitely see the links below. I love you guys. Have a good rest of your evening. My words are getting all jumbled up because I've been doing this for like three hours now, so I can barely speak anymore, but <laughs> have a good evening. Let me know how things resonated below and I will see you guys in the next one. Pisces, darling, welcome to your solar eclipse horoscope. Last but not least, I've been doing this for over three hours. <sighs> I'm like, my words are all jumbled up. So if I don't make sense, if I'm speaking like, you know, <laughs> like random languages over here, just excuse me. But anyways, Pisces, so this like solar eclipse is happening in your second house. It would definitely help if I had the chart ready, but I did not for some reason. Um, this solar eclipse is happening in your second house of money, income, resources, finances, assets, you know, the things that belong to you, the things that you own, your priorities, your values, things like this, right? So this solar eclipse happening here is really showing you where you have some kind of insecurity, vulnerability, burden that is really being shown and brought into the, the, the conscious, your conscious awakening life here, especially over these next several months of like what you need to move forward on in this area of your life, what you need to take action on, what you need to stop fearing conflict with, right? Especially in finances, especially in resources, especially in like the things that you own and the things that you have and all of that, right? Like it's like you're, it really feels like you're breaking up with financial obligations with other people or like whatever, like agreements that maybe you don't want to be in. You're more focused on like what's good for you what's solid for you what feels independent and sovereign and you know and, and, and helps you embrace your individuality with finances and the things that you want and desire with finances and financial decisions right and um this is even true f even more for you because the ruler of this eclipse mars is in your sign with saturn it's like you're making some big deal decisions you're not fucking around you know pisces like you're like yeah like i'm taking responsibility for myself my life my money and what i want and what i'm doing and we're rocking it right like don't fuck with me right like that's the that's the vibe that i'm getting here um you are taking responsibility for you and what's good for you. And you don't need to apologize for that. You don't need to feel guilty or wrong or anything for that. It's like, this is what I need to do for me. And I'm done feeling guilty or carrying this burden or carrying this like, you know, unworthiness. Like I need to prove myself whatever kind of energy with me over these decisions that I'm making with my finances and my resources and the things that I want, the things that the actions that I want to take and the things that I desire in my life. And that's the way it is, right? And so I don't feel like this solar eclipse is negative or anything. I feel like this is really actually like positive. It's setting like a new era. It's setting a new standard. It's setting a new like this is what I'm going towards. This is what I'm doing. Like, like what are you going to do about it? You know, like watch me, you know, like but there is like an even more positive <laughs> transit happening, which is Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus in your third house. And so this could definitely be a lot of inspiration and creativity coming in, a lot of different ideas and downloads coming in for you um, where you are really inspired to kind of you know, like, you're, like like some kind of path or door is opening for you, especially in terms of your creativity, your mindset, the things that you learn on a day-to-day -day basis and your local environment and community, the things that you're speaking about, things like that. Um, so definitely pay attention to that because it could definitely be bringing in some kind of really like random ideas that really lead to like a abundance and value in your life, like more value and quality of life. So definitely pay attention to that. So yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of like healing and merging and integration going on here with finances for you, Pisces, and you really coming into your power with this area of your life, like what's good for you, what you need, what you value, what you prioritize, like, you know, and so let me know down below if that's resonating and what you are noticing coming up for this eclipse. And if you would like a reading to go even deeper for you personally, definitely see the link down below. My my readings are only going to be on sale for a few more days. So definitely see that. And then I also have some other things down there as well. If you would like to be in my world, not just for astrology, but for like self-development and like tapping into your badassery, your freaking magic and like like setting the world on fire and like gaining success and like having this as your business if you're like a solopreneur like you're on this path like my membership is down there I also have mentorship options available right now so definitely see the description below if you're into that and I love you guys that is the end of this video finally I've been filming for three hours and I hope you guys have a solar great solar eclipse <laughs> told you I couldn't talk and I will see you guys in the next one bye